now. <laughs> okay, welcome everybody to the International Speaker, Author, and Entrepreneur Network. And yes, the network. And uh, now it is the International Speaker, Author, Entrepreneur. Um, I gotta maybe rearrange those words a little bit so it makes a cool um, acronym. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but I am so glad you're here because tonight we're gonna hear from my friend Linda Hollander, who's an amazing businesswoman and knows everything you need to know about sponsorships. Whether you want them for your corporate, you get corporate sponsorships or sponsorships for your events. And I know you're only gonna get a snippet of her tonight, but she does other webinars. And I think you have one tomorrow even, right? Don't you have a I webinar? do, yes. Yeah. So if you want more of her, then you can sign up for her webinar for tomorrow as well, or go get her stuff. I have her whole program and uh, I've been to her live events in LA and they're really great. And so you're gonna have fun with her, but just like I say in the meetup, if you show up on time, you get an introduction. So we're gonna do introductions really quick. You got about 30 seconds and I'm gonna time you. So um, I, cause we're all speakers and we like to go on and on and on and on and on about everything fabulous in our business and everything. So uh, I'm gonna start at the top where I see and just, I'll do Cindy Sharp and Barb and Gracia, then Chuck and Tina in that order. And then I'll add some people after that. So just be ready. And um, then make sure you're also opening up the chat room. I think there's only one of you on the phone. So open up the chat. It should pop up on your left, on your right hand side and put in the stuff you're talking about into the chat as well, along with your website URL and or email address because I save the chat you know, and I send it out with the replay. And people that aren't here can actually um, find you in the chat if they listen to the replay and all that. So. And Linda, you can put as much stuff in the chat. Anybody can put as much stuff as they want in the chat. Okay. Um, and then um, calls to off action and all that kind of stuff. And usually at the end, we'll go around at the end. Um, after we do a little hot seat at the end, we will go around and give people opportunity to um, share if they've got an upcoming event or if they have something uh, that's going on that we might be able to participate in or promote or see them live. Okay. Okay. Um, if you guys, I might have muted you because there's a lot of bunch of noise, and I'm just trying to keep the noise down. So if you could just mute when you're not talking, and then um, unmute when you're ready to talk. So we'll go Cindy, Barb, Linda, Chuck. I'm sorry, Linda. We'll go last, and, and I'll introduce you last. But so Cindy, Barb, Chuck, Tina, and then Barbara. So far. So mark set go. First off, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Hi everybody, I'm Cindy Sharp. I'm a self-love therapist and I help people learn how to live their own self-love life. And I do that through a few different things, but the most important thing that I wanna share with you is that you are loved and I'm thrilled to meet you. Yay, we are loved. Okay, Barb. Guess what this is? <laughs> this is someone <laughs> whose original content has been stolen. I'm Barb Ingracia of managecopyright.com and I help uh, people protect their gold mine, guard your gold mine, um, and help them use the copyright law as a tool to create assets and to protect those assets so that you're not having to say, oh my gosh, my stuff's been stolen again. So I enjoy working with individuals and with organizations. I really enjoy bringing some fun to a complicated topic uh, through through workshops and other presentations. Awesome. Thanks, Byron. Chuck. Chuck Cooper here, and I've been through too much of what Barbara was showing up front there, and you can see the results. Ah! <laughs> I'm a speaker, author, speaker coach, and primarily speak to education associations, colleges, universities, anything in the higher education world. Awesome. Tina. Did I say Tina? Yeah. Oh, you're muted. Hold on. Me? I got you. Go ahead. Okay. I'm a holistic healthcare advocate, a speaker, a coach, and a workshop facilitator, and I am going to be um, at a book launch for our new book, Destiny Talks. 
in April 6th, I believe, with John Shen, who is the gentleman who does um, Speak and Grow Rich. He just did the movie. So oh. he's going to be there for our book launch. And uh, I'll give more information on that. Awesome. Woo! Congrats. Thanks. Barbara Ellison. And then Patrice and Michelle. I got you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Perfect. Oh, hi. I'm Barbara Ellis of Time Partner Media. Uh, I work with people to get them the basics of SEO, the search engine optimization, to make sure that their uh, website is at least op optimized for the basics. So, and I have a free thing for that too. So, to do that. Awesome. Thank you. Patrice, go ahead. Hi, my name is Patrice Lynn. I'm the best-selling author of Rise to Success. And my question for you is how many people think that you may potentially know more about how to program your cell phone than you do your own brain? And on our cell phone, yeah, we, uh, we download apps, we get maps to tell us where to go, we speak voice text, we like our Facebook ads. And that's really all of the same things that we can do for our brain. So my Rise to Success program stands for repetition, images, sound, emotion. And I help you stop living with a limited mindset, quit falling short of your goals and dreams, and break habits of stress and negativity to rewire your brain for success. I'm a author, speaker, coach, consultant, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, and I'm doing a workshop on March 2nd. Okay, great. Put it in the chat. Awesome. Okay. And Michelle, and then Johnny, and then Carrie. You're muted. Now you're unmuted. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Michelle Mariscal with Energy M, and I do grief recovery work with people, uh, work with people in grief and loss. And today, I am in the middle of my launch for my new book, Growing Through Grief. And I've put the um, I've put the link in our chat right now. The numbers are seven, nine, and thirteen. Those are the rankings. Oh my gosh! Yeah. You need to hit number one, you guys. Somebody, so I'm so close. Number. So yeah. if you guys want to help me hit number one, just click on that. <laughs> click on that <laughs> link and spend ninety nine cents <laughs> for your copy of Growing Through Grief. Awesome. And your website is? Energym.org. Energym, letter M. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Johnny, Carrie, and then Rich. Hold on, Johnny. Ah, you're unmuted. Go ahead. I just, I just picked, uh, purchased my Kindle book, so that, that kind of helped your numbers go up a little bit. But I'm Johnny Lujan, johnnyluhan.com, and uh, I help people build confidence and find the courage to change the things they can. Uh, I'm an author, I'm a, I'm a pastor, I'm a speaker, and in March, I'm going to do a workshop for the lacrosse team of Granite Bay High School, so that's kind of cool. I work a lot with kids, too. That is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Carrie. Hi, everybody. My name is Carrie Perky Pyle, and I am a fundraising writer. I specialize in raising money for nonprofit organizations through direct mail. Now everyone says, oh, you do grants. I don't actually do grants. Um, those are fantastic to have. Um, and I can you know, connect you with people who do grants. What I do is I write appeal letters and donor newsletters to foster the relationship between your supporters and um, your organization so that they really start to feel like that is their cause and they're willing to participate in many ways to support the organization. I'm super excited to be here today. Um, I've heard Katrina, um, well, I guess maybe not heard, but seen Katrina post things about Linda before, and I'm very excited to learn more about corporate sponsorships and add that to the suite of things that I offer to nonprofits. Awesome, yes, and it's all good, Linda, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> All right, Rich. Thanks, Carrie. Rich, and then Rayleigh, and then there's a 626 phone number. You'll be lit next after that. Good evening, everyone. I'm Rich in name only. My name is Rich Sieber, and I'm a speaker and an author. During March of Dimes March for Babies season, I speak a lot on behalf of the March for Babies, and I tell my son's inspirational story. 
and I've written about him in a couple of different books, Autism and Awesometism. And uh -huh. so this is a particularly good speaking time for me, January through April. Uh, thanks to the March of Dimes, there's quite a few opportunities and I look forward to each and every one of those. That's awesome. I love that. Awesome. Autism. Awesome. I'll say it again. Awesome. I have a series of two books and the subtitle is Autism and Awesometism. Mm, good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Raylin jumped off, so the person in the phone, 626, phone number, who is that? Can you hear me? You are unmuted. 626, phone number. Going once. Oh, I'm sorry, I muted myself over here. I'm sorry, okay. I apologize for that. <laughs> So it was a two-layer mute system over here. Got it. So, um, <laughs> so my name is Kimberly Richardson. I'm, I'm, I'm not an author. I, um, I'm, I just found this um, group last night, and I was very curious oh, about what was going on. And um, I do want to open up some internet businesses, but right now I'm not doing that. I'm, <clears throat> I work as a social worker right now. Okay, Kimberly. So if I'm allowed to just listen and absorb that would just be fantastic you certainly can and we just like to introduce you if you're here so we know what you're doing and uh, okay. you joined the meetup then so you put your information into the meetup already because then we can I, 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 I did oh. I did okay good because mm -hmm. then we can find you if you guys have rsvp to this event then you can go in and find people from this event in the meetup so you'll get the you'll get the chat room contents of course if people put their chat in but if you've RSVP'd on the meetup page, then you'll actually be able to go in and say, oh, it's great to meet you, or send somebody a private message on meetup, just an FYI. So it's good to All RSVP. right, thank you. I think I tried to join, but I'm not sure if it went through. So maybe I'm just a little new to the meetups. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. But it'll be Kimberly. It'll be Kimberly when I finally get, get able to uh, join. Okay, and then some people are new in here. Some people have been around a while. It's all good either way. And just make sure you put your full name in there, your headshot, uh, because otherwise people just kind of think you're a fly-by-night kind of thing. So it's uh, okay. It's a good place to network. Though. All right, good. All right, thank you. All right, so then we've got Gary and then Ada, and then I think Hi. we'll have gotten everybody unless somebody chimes in. Gary, 30-second introduction, my man. Okay. Hi, my name is Gary McKenzie. I work with uh, entrepreneurs and business owners, help them grow their business. And primarily, I focus on how to use public speaking and presentation skills in order to give them visibility. Because when you can stand and speak in public, you're viewed as the expert. And people want to do business with experts. So it's Gary McKenzie. I look forward to hearing everyone's story. Awesome, great. And then Ada, is it Ada? I just, I can't unmute you now. So, I just, there you go. Hi. Hi. My, my name's Ada. And I'm sorry I have to rush to get my son. So, I have to walk. I couldn't use my uh, uh, my camera. And I am a uh, um, local realtor. Also, home staging business owner. Home so, staging. Yeah. Okay. I think I just want to. Does everybody yeah, hear I used to work. Can you hear me? Does everybody hear her cutting out or is it me? No. Oh, oh can you hear me? Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I'm 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 a um, small business owner, so I just uh, want to learn awesome. how to develop develop my skill. Yeah, communication oh. skill, especially I speak Mandarin, so my English might have some accents. I hope you guys mm -hmm. forgave me. <laughs> okay, well, welcome, and this group is for seasoned or beginner entrepreneurs, authors. It's all good. So, um, we are all, I'm going to mute you though because it's some background noise. Okay. 
So then we want to introduce, you know, I'm going to, let me just do a little housekeeping. Do you want to do a little quick intro and then I'll formally introduce you, Linda, or would you rather just me introduce you? Because I got a couple things. Go for it. You can introduce me. Okay. Uh, and then we'll come back to you for the little presentation. So, uh, so Linda Hollander is, um, she has been featured by Inc. and Entrepreneur Magazines as a leading expert on corporate sponsorship. She is the author of the book, Corporate Sponsorship and Three Easy Steps, Get Funding from Sponsors, even if you're just starting out. She's also the CEO of Sponsor Concierge and the Sponsor Secret Seminar that I've been to that's amazing. And her sponsors include Microsoft, Dun & Bradstreet, Epson, Citibank, FedEx, American Airlines, Wells Fargo, Staples, HealthNet, Marriott, Southwest Airlines, Los Angeles Business Journal, Walmart, Bank of America, and IBM. That's just to name a few, I'm sure. And uh, we met way back when, when she was doing the Wealthy Bag Lady is one of her brands. And then she ha was having an event in LA. Was I a speaker at that or just an attendee? And I can't remember. Uh, yeah, you were a speaker once. Oh, good. And <laughs> that was a long time ago. Um, that was probably uh, one of the first events that I spoke at and actually traveled to. With, mm -hmm. with so it was fun to get out of uh, my comfort zone there. And so, Linda, is there anything you want to share really quick before? I don't. I hate to go back into now logistics and stuff that I've introduced you. So. Why don't we just go right into what you're doing, and then when you're done, I'll go back into logistics, because I just want to remind people to um, sign up to speak for these webinars or the luncheons, because I have opportunities. So I'll tell you more in a little bit, but you got to hang out. All right, so Linda, tell us what we need to know in 15 minutes or less about sponsorships. Okay. So <laughs> I, I've actually been taking notes here, and I see we've got business owners, We've got speakers. We've Hold got on. authors. Hold one second. Patrice, is there a problem? No, there's something to celebrate. Michelle's book is a now a number one bestseller. It's oh, a she number got one. Number one? Wow. 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 I just went and bought it. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> Cool. I just, I'm that. sorry, but that is a big deal. So I was very, I deal. had to interrupt everything and let everybody know that she's Thank not. Thank you. And she probably went on video because she's screen capturing everything right now, which you have to do. So. Yay. Okay, <laughs> number one, Michelle. Okay, Patricia set up. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, that is awesome. And when you're an author, I mean, that's just the biggest thing. I was just picking up my books off the floor because I knocked them off in the last webinar and, um, I have four international bestsellers. It's amazing. But, you know, it's good. Anyway, so back to Linda. Back to the focus. Okay. Let's start fresh. Let's start fresh. And, and congratulations, Michelle. I'll, after this is over, I'll hang out and I'll click on the link and buy your book, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, we all got to help each other. We do. Um, so uh, I guess, Katrina, I'll tell them a little bit about my story, and you're part of my story, uh, because um, basically uh, I, you know, had a business, and starting my business just absolutely changed my life, turned it around. Before I had my business, I was in the poverty trap. I was in an abusive relationship. Uh, I started a business with my best friend. Uh, we knew nothing. I was an art major. She was a cinema major. And we turned the business into a multi-million dollar enterprise. And I was able to pay off my debts. I was able to get out of that abusive relationship. I met my husband. He is the kindest, most gentle person in the world. My cat is around here somewhere. Um, he had a 20 year old cat when we met. So I knew he had to be a decent person. Uh, and uh, let's see, I was able to travel the world. But what I absolutely love doing is what Katrina does. Uh, she was kind of my role model because I wanted to coach uh, business owners, uh, especially women business owners, because I had a business that sold promotional shopping bags, the ones that you see in the malls and at trade shows, and women would come and they wouldn't just order the bags. They would say, hey, how do I do sales? How do I do marketing? And I said, I want to teach other women to get empowered financially through entrepreneurship, to learn how to start and succeed in their own small business. So I got this crazy idea in my head to start a women's small business expo. 
I also wanted to be a speaker. I also wanted to be an author, uh, but uh, I didn't want to go the traditional route to be a speaker and just kind of do the what, what I call the animal circuit, the Lions Club and the you know Elks Lodge and the Loyal Order of Water Buffaloes. I wanted to just you know kind of catapult my speaking career and my my book. So uh, I, I created an event and I hired myself as the keynote speaker. So I was no longer a struggling speaker. I was the CEO of the Women's Small Business Expo. But you get that great idea. And then your second thought is, uh-oh, I got to pay for this. How am I going to pay for this? Because uh, I was out of the bag business at that time. Uh, my, my partner had bought me out, so I had some money. But, you know, I really wanted to, to do an absolutely first-rate event. So I looked on the Internet and I said, what the heck are these things called sponsors? And I found that sponsors will help you with your speaking, with your book, with your business, with your event, with your nonprofit uh, for Carrie, uh, you know, uh, with your projects, because a big chunk of my business right now is social influencers, the people who have their own YouTube channel or do internet radio or podcasts, huge, huge. So uh, I found out that sponsors would underwrite my event and I would be able to do it. And my very first sponsors, were Bank of America, Walmart, and IBM. And this is when I just had the idea in my head. I didn't know if it had legs. I didn't know if it would be successful, uh, but I sold them on the concept. And that's what you could do with sponsors is sell them on the concept. And sponsor money is money that you don't have to pay back. So it's, it's very cool. It's very different than a loan because you're not saddled with debt. So, you know, make a long story short, I did the Women's Small Business Expo for 10 years. The lovely Katrina was one of my speakers and she attended even before she spoke. Um, and you know, women met their business partners there. Women got the missing pieces of the puzzle that they needed to create multi-million dollar businesses. And it was all possible because of sponsors. Uh, so that's kind of my quick story about how I got started with sponsorship uh, and how you can get started with sponsorship. That's it. I'm all that's I got. <laughs> I just thought you might want to take it in one direction or another. Yes. Yeah, so we could take some questions. I was just pulling out my sponsorship uh, thing that I still haven't finished. Like she totally helped me get my sponsorship thing done. It's all Beautiful. like color, it's super cool. And then I think part of me was just scared to pull the trigger and go after all the media. And now uh -huh. I'm updating. Uh huh. But um, I'm telling you guys, if you get her or take her workshop or class, you can walk through all of this and get it done. It, was, it wasn't that hard after I learned from you. So Yeah, you know, sponsorship is a lot easier than people think. So why don't I give them the top five ways uh, to get sponsors? Do that. Okay, so first of all, you want to really be clear about your demographics. Your demographics are your destiny because sponsors are not buying your speaking or your book or your business or your projects or your event or your nonprofit. They're giving you money because the definition of sponsorship is connecting a company to people who buy things. So you really want to have as many data points as you can about your audience. So when I was getting sponsors for the Women's Small Business Expo, I just went on Google and I, I researched statistics for women business owners and I found, oh my God, it was just staggering. And, and Katrina kind of knows these things. Uh, women are starting businesses at twice the rate of men. Women own 60% of the wealth in America. Women spend more in America than five countries combined. And uh, <laughs> let's see, women make or influence over 85% of the purchasing decisions in America. So whoever your market is, you want to do that kind of research and you want to have those data points because that's how I really sold sponsors when I just had an idea, when I was what they call selling vapor. Uh, so you really want to, uh, so that is secret number one. Uh, you really, really need to be clear about your demographics. Now, number two in the top five ways to get corporate sponsors is what Katrina was talking about. You need an amazing sponsor proposal and you need what's called an industry standard sponsor proposal and without that proposal you will not get funded because you're asking for money that you don't have to pay back 
that in order to get that money, you need to provide them with a proposal. And that is all they see about you and that's how they make their funding decisions. So you need a really, really amazing sponsor proposal. So when I was starting out, I knew that I needed a great website. Um, you know, because you, with a website, that's kind of a great equalizer. You could look as big as IBM with a website. Uh, and then I needed a great proposal. Uh, so that is uh, step number two of the top five ways to get corporate sponsors. Number three is you need to what we call promise deliverables. Write down promise deliverables. Uh, and uh, that's something I work with Katrina on because vagueness is the enemy of success in sponsorships. So, you know, you can't just say, oh, well, you'll get media exposure. I'll connect you to this great market. How are you going to connect them? Are you going to do podcasts? Are you going to do email marketing? Are you going to do videos? Are you going to do what we're doing right now, Facebook Live? You know, what are your touch points and how are you going to connect the sponsors to the people who can buy their stuff? Uh, number four is don't sell yourself short. Most people that I talk to, they underprice themselves notoriously. And I get proposals all the time that are asking for $250 in sponsorship money. Well, here's what happens in the sponsor world. It's kind of a team sport. So one person does not make the decision. They show it to their team. They show what you do to their colleagues, and then they make the decision to sponsor you. Uh, so, uh, you know, you really want to price it appropriately. And what I usually tell my clients, write this down, because I'll tell you how much money you can make, is uh, $10,000 to $100,000 from each sponsor, and that is per year and renewable. So let me tell you what that means. So ten to $100,000 from each sponsor per year, and it's what we call renewable. So renewals are kind of like the cash machine with sponsorship. Uh, that means if a sponsor likes you, they'll fund you this year, the next year, and then the next year. Uh, so uh, you want it renewable, and you want deliverables, and you want to price yourself appropriately. Because if you price yourself too low, if you're asking for $250, uh, the sponsor, first of all, is going to think, well, this is not worth my time. And secondly, you're telling them that you really don't have anything of value to offer them. Uh, and then the last, uh, number five, is whenever possible, make appointments with your prospective sponsors and listen. Uh, because most people will make an appointment and they'll go right into their proposal and right into their program and into their presentation. And you want to ask the sponsor questions. You want to make it a fact-finding expedition the first time you talk to a sponsor. You want to know, hey, what are your marketing goals and how can I help you? You want to know, hey, what are your upcoming campaigns? What's your submission process? What sponsorships have you done before? Why were they successful? Which ones were not successful and why? Because that tells you how they measure success with that sponsor company. So you really want to learn about them and you want to make them open up to you. And then you'll say, okay, well, you said you wanted, uh, you know, the, the mom market. Uh, the mom market is huge. Or you wanted the entrepreneurial market. You know, and here's how I can help you get that particular market and get those particular consumers. Uh, so that, that's kind of the top five ways to get your corporate sponsors. Awesome. And I just actually typed all of that out in a little post for you guys <laughs> as she was talking. Okay. There we go. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yay. That was amazing. That was fast. You're and a fast can, typer. Right. We can take some questions. Um, I have a couple other things to share too. And then we want to make sure that if any of you have live events, that you put them in the chat and that you can announce them or a speaking gig. Um, but we have a, a good time to ask some questions. So um, you can raise your hand with the click thing, or you can just unmute yourself if you have a question for Linda. I know some of you do. Let's see. Someone says more information about pricing appropriately, and then we'll go to Johnny. Sure. So more about okay, pricing. I'll tell you about how to price your sponsorship. And this yeah. is just kind of a, an introductory primer about how to price them. I would need to talk to you you know, connect with you one-on-one -on -one just to see what you have. The, the lowest level of sponsorships is what's called visibility benefits. Write down visibility benefits. And that's what most people think sponsorship is. 
Uh, I've had people call me and say, well, if I put a logo on my website, can I get a million dollars for that? Well, no, because sponsorship is not about visibility anymore. Uh, sponsorship is about different things. Not that you don't need those things, you know, signage, visibility. If you write a book, you could put a resource section and, you know, put your sponsors in the resource section. You could sticker the book. It says, you know, this book provided uh, by XYZ company. You could put a bookmark in there. When I was working with Wells Fargo, they put a little bookmark in from Wells Fargo and they gave that to people. There's various ways. And if you speak, you could have a sponsor introduce you. You could pass out their marketing materials, things like that. Um, so the visibility is your lowest level of sponsorship. The next level is the connection benefits. So connections are when the sponsor could actually interface with their core consumers. So if you're doing an event or you're doing something like this, even a virtual event, you could have the sponsor introduce you. You can do social media, which is a two-way exchange, a social media campaign. You could do press releases. You could do award presentations. Uh, you could do all kinds of things that are kind of like a two-way, more of a direct communication between the sponsor and their consumer base. The next level up is media. And we don't just mean the digital platforms. We mean traditional media because traditional media is not dead far from it, and especially to sponsors because they like traditional media. So that is TV and radio and print advertising. And a lot of people are, you know, maybe thinking, oh, I can't afford to buy media. Well, you can't, maybe not now, but when a sponsor is paying you maybe $50,000, you could spend a couple grand on buying some media. So when you are approaching sponsors, you want to think about your future budget and mm -hmm. not your current budget. It's what's called a blue sky proposition. Um, and then the highest level of sponsorship is what's called naming rights, naming rights. So, uh, raise your hand. If you saw the Super Bowl, did you see the Super Bowl? Okay. So where was the Super Bowl held at Mercedes Benz stadium in Atlanta? That is called a naming rights deal. And you're thinking, you're probably thinking, oh, well, I don't have a, an arena. Well, you could still do naming rights because it could be your program presented by XYZ company. And that's what's called naming rights. And naming rights are very valuable because they get their name on everything. You better believe that at the Super Bowl, when people got tickets, it said Mercedes-Benz Stadium on the printed tickets. It says it all over the place and they got coverage all over the television uh, because they had naming rights for that stadium. And, but you can actually use naming rights in what you do. Awesome. And the... Um the media, the, well, all of these levels are really good. And some of you might be thinking, well, I don't have a big following on social media or I don't have a lot to give. And I know that was one of my big things when I was doing this too. It's like, well, how, you know, I have 250 friends on Facebook. I have, you know, 600 people on my meetup. I have uh, a thousand people on my email list and I speak once a month. I mean, so, you know, what would you do with that? Okay, well, when I got started, I had no experience. I'd never done an event in my life. I'd never worked with a sponsor in my life. And I had no following. You know who I had on my list? I had my parents. I had my brother-in-law. <laughs> I, would, I would have put my cat on there if I could have put the cat on there. Uh, what I did was I kind of did what's called borrowed credibility. Write down borrowed credibility, that strategy. And uh, you kind of uh, hook up with somebody who has a following and then, you know, you promote each other so you could grow your following. You could also hire people to build your social media very quickly. And that's, that's a cool thing that when I was starting, I didn't have the social media. Now, of course, it's very important in sponsorship. Lastly, everybody thinks there's these magic numbers. Like when I reach so many people in my following and my fan base, then I'm going to go after sponsors. Go after them now because all these numbers are so fluid. You could have just a few people today and in a very short amount of time, have a lot more people as far as building your audience. Um, so uh, always be building your audience. And then one more thing, I want you to build what we call the proprietary list. Uh, because with social media, that's what's called rented real estate. Uh, they own the names, they own the email addresses, you don't. So build a proprietary email address. One, one email contact where you have the phone number and the email address and all that is worth like probably 20 Facebook followers. 
Uh, so I'll be building everything at the same time. But you don't worry if you don't have like the magic numbers or anything yet. All right, and Johnny, did you have a question? Yeah, I guess it's probably a random question. It's just, you know, when you look at our corporate sponsorship, <clears throat> I'm sure most corporations sponsor because it's all marketing for them. Um, is there a sp specific uh, person or a person, how you find those sponsorships? Okay, I'll tell you how to find them. There's a few ways that I like to find them. Uh, first of all, I like LinkedIn. Uh, my company uses LinkedIn uh, to find people, and that's probably the best social media platform to find your prospective sponsors. What you want to do is you want to look for people in the marketing department, the marketing department. And uh, that's how I started getting my first sponsors. I just called and asked for the marketing department. Uh, with, with FedEx, that's what I did. I called, I said, hey, who's in the marketing department? They passed me from one person to another. I got the right guy and FedEx, remember I was talking about renewals, FedEx gave me a multi-year contract. They, they were with me for about four years wow. and that was from a phone call. But you know, nowadays I know it's harder to make phone calls. So sponsors have told me, uh, they tell me a, a lot of things off the record. So they've told me that they like you to introduce yourself by email because they don't want to be surprised by a phone call or they like you to contact them through, through LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is one way to find your sponsors. Uh, another way to find your sponsors is buying a directory. And that is kind of my favorite way. And uh, I do have to disclose that my company does have a directory of sponsors. It's called the Gold Directory. Uh, you could, you know, but you, there's other sponsor directories out there. Uh, and the, because LinkedIn is kind of hit or miss. Uh, you, you'll contact a person and they don't contact you back. And you don't know, did they not respond because they're not the right person? Did they not respond because you didn't have the right proposal and the right pitch? Uh, so I like directories because you get the person's name, the contact information, they've been vetted, you know, as really doing sponsorships. Not every company does sponsorships because a lot of people who call me, they want to, to work with Apple Computer. And Apple has absolutely no initiatives in sponsorship. They don't do any sponsorships. And somebody's going to waste their time with that. You know, I know that, but they don't know that. So then they, they say, oh, this doesn't work. But it does work. You have to do it in the right way. So those are my favorite ways to find the sponsors. Thank you. Awesome. Sure. Patrice. All right. Thank you, Linda. This is fascinating. I have a question. So my book is called Rise to Success. And I've noticed on TV that there's a lot of companies that use the word rise. So like, for instance, Marriott Hotels, they're they have this rise campaign. I'm pretty sure it's married. It might be another hotel. Is that potentially a good idea to look for a sponsor that has a name similar to what you're doing? Uh, I think it's good, but I think the better way to go after sponsors is the audience that you serve. Tell me a little bit about your audience. Well, that's something that I haven't really developed much. I mean, I'm, I'm, work, I'm going after like real estate, mortgage, insurance, financial services, lawyers, that kind of group to just start and get out there and see if I can do things with that group. But I haven't, I, I haven't figured out any specific demographic. Okay. Well, your demographic is uh, licensed service professionals. Because accountants and attorneys, you know, they, they have to be licensed. So those are licensed service professionals. Okay. That is a very compelling demographic to sponsors because these people are upwardly mobile. These people have disposable income. These people buy things. So okay. probably I would target them by, by the audience instead of the slogan. Okay. Um, but I think another one that said we rise was University of Phoenix or one of the... Yes, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, I've, I've worked with University of Phoenix and they, they do sponsor things. So another uh, kind of category that you could go for is the for-profit universities because I believe they use We Rise also as a okay. one. Okay. And of course, brain training and higher education could be a good match. Absolutely. Yeah. And I yeah. think somebody else had a question. Uh, what percentage of your sponsors renew year after year uh -huh. in the chat? Do you have, uh, is it? Uh, let's see, what percentage renew? I would say about half of them renew, uh, maybe 50 to 60%. But here's the thing that I read. I read an amazing statistic that 70% of sponsors don't renew. 
So I've got a whole lot higher track record in my clients. And here's how to get your, your sponsors to renew. It is all about relationship. Katrina is a master of maintaining relationships. So you definitely learn from her um, because she always keeps in touch with me. She always lets me know what's going on with her. She always gives me wonderful opportunities like this. And I just love her to death. So kind of do what she does. Um, okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, I had American Airlines as a sponsor and I did a radio interview and I actually went to the studio and everything and it was really fun. And then I drive back from the studio and I just made an email to American Airlines, to my contact there. And I said, hey, I just mentioned you on the radio and I researched it and I said, you know, this radio station has 75,000 listeners. Uh, so when you can, remember I said promise deliverable. So when you could put a statistic like that behind it, instead of saying, oh, we'll reach a lot of people, say, hey, we'll reach uh, the $2.4 billion market of, of moms or something. So I said, this radio station has 75,000 listeners. And I just uh, promoted you on this station when I was doing an interview. And she emails me right back. That's, and she says, thank you so much. And they renewed. So it's little things like that. So that's like an informal relationship building process. You could also do what we call formal relationship building, which is submitting what we call a renewal report. You want to make a renewal report. It's not a big deal. Sometimes it's just like a one sheet that says what you've done for that sponsor. Because a lot of people, let's say you have a one-year contract, which I recommend, a one-year contract. And a lot of people will come back at the end of the year and they'll have their hand out and say, give me more money. And the sponsor's thinking, well, what, what'd you do for me? Why would I give you more money? So you always want to be submitting reports and uh, talking to that sponsor. And then the renewal is the most natural thing in the world. And I'm here, I'm here. Uh, Cindy had a question before you. There was someone, Carrie said, I didn't understand what you said about proprietary email address. Oh, okay. So it's called a proprietary list. So your proprietary list is different than your following on social media because uh, with social media, you don't really have their contact information. You can only contact them through social media. I want you to have email addresses. I want you to have phone numbers for people. So that's what's called your proprietary list. So you want everybody who's ever expressed interest for you, Carrie, it would be in your nonprofit please ask them, hey, say, hey, can I have your email? Can I have your phone number? And add them to a list because that is a whole lot more valuable uh, than, than social media. And I'm not knocking social media. I think social media is amazing. And obviously you're all here because of the power of social media. But I also want you to be building what we call the proprietary list. Uh, another way to build your list is have your website be a list building website. So somewhere on your website, have you know a kick butt lead magnet uh, that has people opt in and I'll give you mine uh, if you could write this in the chat box uh, go to sponsorconcierge.com that's my company sponsorconcierge.com in the upper right hand corner it says get the number one secret for getting sponsors and I get leads every day uh, from that uh, so uh, that's what you can have on your website so, uh, Cindy, did you have a question? Oh. Okay. Yes, I do. Go ahead. Uh, first off, thank you, Linda, uh, for coming on here and supporting us. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, my question is, is that, so you were doing huge events, it sounds like, you know, um, directed at women. I do something a little bit unique and different, and that is I speak at colleges on behalf of a foundation that I have, not a nonprofit, but a foundation. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious to know, could you get a sponsor to sponsor you to go speak to college students? Mm -hmm. You can. Now, first of all, uh, Katrina's been to my event. I never had more than 100 people at my event. I didn't have thousands of people at my oh. event. Uh, and the beauty was that I had a kick butt list. I had a list of over 20,000 people. You know, so it's not always about the bodies in the room. It's about your sphere of influence. Okay. And for our speakers on this particular uh, meeting, every time you speak, it is considered a live event. So yeah, a sponsor can sponsor you to speak on somebody else's platform or do the college circuit or whatever you want to do. 
So if you don't have to do your own branded event like what I did or what Katrina does, you could just go around and speak on other people's stages and get sponsored. I love that. So, um, well, thank you very much, Lindy. I appreciate it. Sure. Speaking on stages is one of the biggest things that I do, for sure. Um, starting, let me just add to when you talk about Wells Fargo and Southwest and all the big sponsors, you know, if, if you're not comfortable, because a lot of this is mindset, right? A lot of this is mindset and like, am I worthy, you know, of getting this sponsor? Go after the local bank that has one, you know, one uh, location that's next to your event or that's local to you or in the chamber with you or go after a local printer or get some in-kind sponsorships to get started, right? That's just like where they give you stuff, right? <laughs> I know some people who get their wardrobe done because they're a speaker and they get free clothes. I mean, that's a start now, but... I'm not trying to let you out of this. I'm just <laughs> saying that in kind, you guys start somewhere. So, I mean, I clearly haven't even sent the big dollars out yet. So, I'm just saying. But. Okay. Well, let me talk about a couple of those things. First <laughs> of all, in kind is valuable because yes. it's budget relieving. I mean, you could get, like, like you said, printing. You could yeah. get clothes. You could get rental cars. You could get hotel rooms. You could get airline flights. I mean, it, it relieves your budget. So in-kind is really valuable. Plus, you could leverage in-kind to get the cash sponsors. And, you know, you got to start somewhere. Um, and in-kind just means, you know, trading of benefits and services. It's also called a trade sponsor, by the way. Uh, so that's good. Now let's talk about what, else, what the other thing that you mentioned, which is called, and everybody could write this down, second-tier sponsors. Second-tier sponsors are great. And like she said, rather than Bank of America, you know, go for a local community bank because they really need you to get the word out about them. They need brand awareness. Everybody knows Bank of America, which was my first sponsor, but not everybody knows your local community bank. And they're a whole lot easier to get. The process is quicker and uh, they want brand awareness because a lot of people, when they start looking for sponsors, they think, oh, well, uh, I gotta, I'm going to go for the big ones because those companies have paid a lot to be top of mind, dig a little deeper into that category for the second tier. And they have money. They have money. One of my sponsors was called Evolution Insurance. None of you have ever heard of Evolution Insurance. I promise you. But they gave me a five-figure deal uh, because that's why. Nobody had heard about them. Uh, they're not State Farm. They're not Aflac. They're not Progressive but they gave me a great deal because they were what's called a wonderful second tier sponsor. Yeah, so get started somewhere. Who's gonna, by the raise of hands, who's gonna do something about this? Like take an action. Not as many as I thought. Okay, and Barbara's going, well maybe, well I'll think about it, well I don't know. Okay. okay. Well, one thing you can do is that she has a webinar tomorrow, you can go into more depth on this, right? Right. And you also have more, is there like, the, there's free stuff on your website, you already sent right. them there. Okay, so do you have another event coming up? Uh, or, yes, if you want to save the date, the Sponsor Secret Seminar in Los Angeles, California is September 24th to September 26th of 2019. Uh, it's a Tuesday through Thursday, and at the Sponsor Secret Seminar, uh, since you came, Katrina, it's like tripled in a, <laughs> in the size. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's still manageable as everybody gets individual attention. Um, but basically at the sponsor secret seminar, we package you for success. Uh, you leave with a complete action plan just for you. And this is the cool thing. You get to meet the sponsors. They come off the platform. They talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. They answer all your questions. Uh, and we've had really cool deals done at the Sponsor Secret Seminar, because we bring you people you can't even get by phone, but I have cultivated relationships with them. Uh, so uh, I will get you some information about that. Uh, just go to sponsorconcierge.com. Uh, if you want to do my webinar tomorrow, click on free class, uh, and then you can also get information about my events there. Awesome. Well, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I know I let her go on and on and on because this is such a hot topic that I think so many of us, you know, we want to make more money in our business. We want to get more clients, but this is a great way. I mean, imagine if someone paid you even 10000 much less 50 or or $100,000 
for your exposure, your visibility, your knowledge, your just you to share. And so it baffles my mind. It still does, Linda. But okay. um, I'm going to get on this. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Um, we have 10 more minutes, you guys. Don't go anywhere unless you need to. But um, so make sure you guys have put your contact information in the chat because I do see that. I send it out to the whole group. Um, Linda, if you want to post more stuff in there, a little bit more detail, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, about your offers and stuff. And uh, if there's anybody that's hosting a live event, or I know um, it was Rich, she would ask about a book launch, right? And then you put the link in. The reason we were all talking about Michelle's is because there's a 24 hour window when you do a book launch. Uh, when you say, okay, I'm going to do my book launch on Tuesday, February 5th. And then you get up at the crack of dawn and you just market the hell out of it. But the goal is to like pre um, prepare people, so to speak. So you would, Michelle, I know, built a list. When I've done my book launches, we just launched the, the Jumpstart Your Blank book in December. And I had a list of like 50 people who said they were willing to promote it on launch day. So you want to have, you want to pre prime a list that's willing to share on social and share an email on the day of your launch. So that's really what you want to do about a launch. There's so much more to know. And actually, I have a ton of information on that because I've done two Amazon launches now, and I have four international bestsellers. And I mean, I can tell you guys how to do this. And I love, love, love teaching this stuff. So I did put a link for a free info call that I talked about writing a book. And some of you might be thinking, well, I don't know what I'd write about. So many, like some of you maybe, but most of you I think are already in the book writing process, which is awesome. So, you know, this group is whether you're new to the writing books or not, or, you know, we want to share resources here. If you help people with books, make sure you put stuff in the um, chat as well. But I am looking for authors for this book for this year. So we had 26 authors in 2018. Um, it was about, through, I don't know, 300 pages or something like that. You get a bunch of copies of the book. Um, there's a page on my website. I can put it in the chat too if you want to be an author. Chuck's in this one. Michelle is in this book. Johnny's in this book. Uh, Barbara and Grassi is in this book. Uh, so there's four of us on the line, or five of us total that are in this book. And um, it's just a really cool tool if you haven't been an author yet, or even if you have, Chuck has a ton of books and he's still went in it for some crazy reason. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but any questions about that, please see me for information about your books or getting started speaking. Um, we, I have two live events coming up. One's a one day, February 22nd. If you are interested in getting started speaking or you're already speaking, but you're not monetizing it either during the speech or after in the follow-up, there's things to be done before, during, and after. And if you're not prepared for all of that, then you're gonna lose thousands of dollars or just miss out on thousands of dollars. So I would love to talk with you or you can go to my event website, which is also in the chat, livebigevents.com. So please check that out. Um, and then I'm happy to talk with anybody if you just want to pick my brain about uh, what you can do in your business to get a jump start. I'm so passionate about helping you make more money doing what you, what you love and um, so yeah. Um, okay, in a show of hands, anybody who has something they need to, would like to share, like a, either a speaking gig of your own, um, it can be online or in person or a live event that you're hosting or speaking at. Raise your hand. Barbara, and Gracia, and then Gary, and then Tina. Go ahead, Barb. Hi, thank you. I'm speaking on the Public Speakers Association February Summit which is this Thursday, an all-day event, and uh, each person gets 25 minutes to, to speak. This month's theme is um, Think Beyond, and um, you can find that at publicspeakersassociation.com. I'll put the link in the chat. I just Thank went through that really quick for you. Uh, yeah, okay, then who did I say? Gary. Okay, I have two events. One, I, I too am speaking at the uh, Public Speakers Association event. My topic is going to be magic words. And then on the 14th, I'm speaking at the uh, Business Women's Center 
in Sacramento. My topic is going to be how to use public speaking to market your business. Awesome. Those are my two events. Awesome, great. Thanks for sharing, Gary. Tina, you're muted. Okay, oh, we're ready. <laughs> yep. Good. So unfortunately, I'm going to miss your speaker's lunch tomorrow um, because I'm going to an open audition for Kevin Bracey, who is doing his show at Crest Theater, and they're doing a speaker's off, kind of like a wrap off <laughs> that yeah. you see, but they're doing speaker's off. They're yeah. having two um, auditions tomorrow, and then on, I'm looking at my calendar here, on February 16th. So he invites people to come witness it just to see what he's up to and also to participate if any of you would like to go and get a shot at being on Chris stage in front of the 900 people awesome yes and you don't have to pay to do that right or no nope. okay. that's free that's a show yeah, it's, yeah. um it's at sacramento state university are the auditions on yeah. both tomorrow and the 16th that's awesome i, I talked to somebody else that was going to do that too okay yeah. any other events that we've got Michelle, did you have one? Michelle? Um, You're unmuted. Um, nothing coming up that's in my head right now. Oh, okay, I thought you had uh, a live event. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. Well, you guys heard about mine. The other one I didn't mention was Love and Money Live. So Love and Money Live is more of an all-around business training. And so if you need to know the marketing, the systems, the website stuff, all the stuff that Linda was saying that I do, that's what the one that you want to come to. It's three days of working on your business. So that one's in March. And you can go to loveandmoneylive.com. You certainly can pay the $297 that's on there right now, or you can use 200 off coupon code and get it for $97. Bucks. But uh, you got to hurry up because that link won't be valid very long. It's in the chat 200 OFF Capitals. So, what day is that, Katrina? March 6, 7, and 8. It's a really good event. I've been doing it since 2009 in one way or another. It's all about, the first day is all about loving for yourself and pricing and things that sometimes we, we don't charge enough. I mean, like, I bet all of you could probably double your rates. And, <laughs> and some of you would be like, freaking out doing that. And so we figured out how to get you over that and make you do it anyways and show you. And people actually make money in my events, which is really fun. I call I call it easy yes offers. And so we create easy yes offers in the room. Uh, Gary's been to quite a few events. Michelle's been to events. Johnny's been to some events. Um, and people make money because I show you how to create a really cool easy yes offer. Not just sell your book or whatever, but we create fun things. And I've had people walk out with thousands of dollars uh, that they didn't even know they were going to create when they got there. So <laughs> it's fun. All right. So a couple other reminders for the sex. Uh, I'm sorry, I keep calling it SAC speaker. I keep changing it. Um, so to sign up to speak, though, on one of these webinars and get on my schedule, which we're going to do these webinars once a month, the first Tuesday of the month uh, for the whole year. And right now, they're only booked through March. So the March speaker is Don Fraseski. I can never say his name, but Gary, you know him. Mm -hmm. And Chuck, you, you know him, Don. Uh, he's speaking on fighting the fear, reducing speaker anxiety. So that'll be fun. And he's a funny guy too. So you're going to want to come to that. Um, tomorrow at our luncheon, we have Pamela Peters talking on the monkey mind and how to get over that. Plus I'm going to do a little training on how to get more clients and some of the ways that you want to change your marketing because what was working even just last year is not working. We have to do a lot more of different kinds of things. And it's more manual labor, you guys. The days of automation in our marketing, as much as we have all these funnels and this and that, it's not working like it used to. And so there's more manual labor. So we really have to get systems in place and or a team or some assistant or two. So you really want to come and you want to really wrap your head around marketing and sales this year because things are shifting. Um, so the webinars will happen. I'm going to, there's going to be a luncheon in March and Stacy Weber's coming up to speak from the Bay Area, from San Jose actually. And she's talking all about sales. So that's the March luncheon. And then in April, I'm looking to um, do an evening event. 
So I'm going to probably switch it up. So March will be a lunch, April will be an evening, and then we'll just alternate a lunch and an evening, a lunch and an evening. And I will still have a short speaker, but it'd be more like a mixer kind of thing. So I'm looking for locations now. So that was an idea, and it'll probably be on a different day of the week because um, I don't know yet. So the evening ones are, are to be determined, but um, but yeah, I want to change it up because we're, you know, so we, I know some people couldn't make the luncheon, so. So there's the update on the group. Make sure you're in the Facebook group. There is a Facebook group uh, called International Speaker Author and Entrepreneur Network. You can network in there. You can share what you're doing. We can share it for you. And if you are having an event, you need to send me a blurb via email. Uh, if you're on this tonight, then you're probably getting my meetup emails, right? And I just sent one right before the call. So respond to that and make sure I know about your book launches or your live events. But you have to give me copy that I can literally just copy and paste into an email that says, Oh, so Rich is having a book launch and he's, you know, it's on this day and you can da da da. So you have to give it to me ready to go because I don't have time to compile it all. So, but I'm happy to share it to the whole meetup group if you do that um, and with a little bit of time. So I'm going to send one out tomorrow for upcoming events. So you need to get on it now. Just a heads up. Uh, okay. Any last minute questions or anything for me or Linda or? Thoughts? Most of you are muted. Patrice, go ahead. You're, oh, yes, go ahead. Oh, wait. I just unmuted you. You unmuted you. You have to. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Linda. This was incredibly, incredibly valuable. And as always, thank you, Katrina, for making this happen. This was really incredible. I mean, it seems like the sky's the limit. You just have to be really think outside the box and think expansively. And I just really appreciate you sharing your story of how you didn't really have much going and then you got the sponsorship going right away. I mean, that is so inspiring. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Linda. Anything else? Well, I just want to say thank you as well. And I wondered if uh, Linda has events that are around Northern California or if she just does the Los Angeles events. I don't think she does. Uh, they're all on mute. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah well, um, I learned from Katrina <laughs> to kind of have a lifestyle business. And uh, when I do travel to speak, I speak on other people's stages, but my events are, are mostly in Los Angeles because that's where I live. That's where my corporate is. And it's easy to import uh, speakers and sponsors to Los Angeles. Uh, so yeah, they're all in Los Angeles. And then I also like Katrina, uh, do webinars. Uh, so you can catch a webinar if you want, or you and I can work together. So if anybody wants to do, you know, have a private call with me or something, just put it in the, the chat box and we'll make it happen. And I highly recommend that private call. She does really focus on your stuff. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say about the events? Oh, and sometimes you just have to get out of town, people. So you got to get out of town and learn a few things and go to something and just dive into a training and la, 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 close everything else out for three or four days. And it's worth it. I'm just, just in L.A. and San Diego in the last two weeks for two different conferences, three different things, actually, in two weeks. You guys, it's amazing when you step out and you just focus what you can accomplish. So... Okay, and uh, if you want to do a private call with me, I see some are coming in. Uh, put your uh, email address, please, in the chat, Perfect. so I know how to contact you. Okay. Yeah, I'll stay. I'll stay around for another five minutes or so if you guys are still trying to put stuff in the chat. Um, but if you have to go, you can go. Any other questions? Yes, Cindy, you're just saying goodbye. Oh, I can't hear you because you're muted. But you're just saying goodbye. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just trying to say thank you and goodbye. Oh. Love to everybody. <laughs> thank you all for showing up. We'll see you next month. If not Congratulations before. again, Michelle. Thank, thank you. Michelle. All right. All right. And then preach when you're ready. You let us know. <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you, Linda. Thank you. You're awesome. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You're wonderful. <laughs>